Feel Pulse. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're broadcasting from COP21, from the 21st Conference of Parties, that is the UN Climate Summit, here in Paris, France. That's supposed to lead to the Paris Accord. I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn now to NASA's former top climate scientist, James Hansen. In 1988, Dr. Hansen first warned about the dangers of climate change when he testified before Congress. He would go on to become the nation's most influential climate scientist. This year, he's making his first appearance at a U.N. climate summit. He's come to Paris to warn world leaders that they're on the wrong track to prevent dangerous global warming. James Hansen joins us now, the director of climate science at Columbia University's Earth Institute. Welcome back to Democracy Now! It's great to have you Thanks with us. Thanks for having me. So uh, you wrote a piece in The Guardian um, saying we're at the point now where temperatures are hitting the one centigrade mark. You said the U.N. is on the wrong track with plans to limit global warming to two degrees Celsius. Yeah, absolutely. I, this is really a total fraud. You know, there's no, we're not going to reduce emissions as long as we let fossil fuels be the cheapest form of energy. There are lots of countries that want to lift their people out of poverty, and of course they should do that. But everybody would be better off if the price of fossil fuels was honest. It should include its cost to society. So what is the plan here? And you're well, coming the, in, interestingly, yeah. as an outsider. You've never been here before. Yeah. And which gives you an interesting perspective. Remarkably, it's not much different than uh, Kyoto, except that here they're not even requiring any connection among the different countries. They're just saying, well, each country, tell us what you're going to do to reduce your emissions. Um, and at the same time, they allow fossil fuels to be the cheapest energy. And appear to be the cheapest energy. They're, of course, they're not really if you include their cost to society. And that's what we should do. We should add a rising fee to uh, the carbon, uh, the fossil fuel price. It would be very easy to do at the domestic mine or port of entry, a very small number of places. But we're, we're uh, instead, we're just saying, well, let's try harder. We'll, uh, you know, we'll give you a plan. We're going to reduce our emissions, although some countries are not going to What did you make that. of President Obama's speech on Monday here at the U.N. Climate Summit? Well, we have to decide, are, are these people stupid or, or are they just uninformed? Are they badly advised? I think that he really believes he's doing something. You know, he wants to have a legacy. Uh, uh, a legacy having done something in the climate problem. But what he's proposing is totally ineffectual. I mean, there are some small things that are talked about here. You know, the fact that they may have a fund for investment, invest more in, in uh, clean energies. Uh, but these are, these are minor things. As long as fossil fuels are dirt cheap, people will keep burning them. So why don't you talk, Dr. James Hansen, about what you're endorsing, a carbon tax? What yeah. does it mean? What does it look yeah, like? Yeah, it should be an across-the-board carbon fee. And in a democracy, it's going to, it should, the money should be given to the public. Just give an equal amount to every, you collect the money from the fossil fuel companies. The rate would go up over time, but the money should be distributed 100 percent to the public an equal amount to every legal resident. Is that, Alaska an example of this? Well, Alaska is giving uh, fossil fuel money to the public, and of course they like that. So it's a sort of, a, it shows how much the public does like getting a monthly check. But uh, what this would do, those people who do better than average in limiting their fossil fuel use would make money. Wealthy people, people who fly around the world a lot and have big houses, they would pay more in increased prices than they would get in their monthly dividend. Explain what you mean. Well, because uh, we're, we're giving all of the money. You collect money from fossil fuel companies and you distribute it equally to all residents. So the one who does better than average in limiting his fossil fuel use will get more in the dividend than he pays in increased prices. And how do you know what their fossil fuel use is? Well, if they don't have to, nobody has to think Think about this. They know, they will just look at prices. Of course, the, the price at the pump is obvious, and uh, 
the electricity bill will be obvious. It, it, this will this will move uh, industry and businesses to develop no carbon and low carbon uh, energies and products that use little fossil fuels. In fact, the economic study shows that in the United States, after 10 years, emissions would be reduced 30 percent because you've got the economy forcing you in the right direction. But as long as you just leave fossil fuels cheap, you're not going to fundamentally change things. It's not only that fossil fuels are kept cheap, the not only U.S. government, governments around the world subsidize yeah. the fossil fuel industry yeah. far more yeah. than any kind of renewables. Yeah, well, that's right, on a total basis. Um, per unit energy, they're subsidizing renewables more, but that's okay. We shouldn't be subsidizing any of them. Let this carbon price ride, that will favor renewables, it will favor energy efficiency, it will favor nuclear power, it will favor anything that is carbon free. That's the way we should do it. And that's the way conservatives would accept it. This is a revenue neutral approach which does not make the government bigger. And I've talked to some leading conservatives and who understand that this is not a hoax. The climate change is not a hoax. And they are, are willing to accept this concept of a revenue neutral carbon fee. Dr. James Hansen, would you like to weigh in on the presidential election in the United States on the issue of climate change? I believe Donald Trump said he wouldn't even see the Pope because of his views on climate change. Uh, but it's not only Donald Trump, the well, Republicans in Congress, and then go to the Democrats. Yeah, well, there's some nut cases who claim that it's all a hoax, and that's absurd. Uh, and I think most of the public recognizes that. You may get a, a fraction of one party that is um, that likes that point of view, but um, the majority of the public realizes that's nonsense. But I haven't seen any uh, candidate, liberal or conservative, who is proposing what is actually needed, and that's making the price of fossil fuels honest, but not taking the money to make the government bigger, instead give it to the public. What about the Democrats? I was saying, I haven't seen any uh, politician, Democrat or Republican, who has proposed a revenue neutral carbon fee. There's an organization, Citizens Climate Lobby, which has been doubling in size each year the last several years, which is beginning to be heard. In fact, uh, Democrats, uh, Bernie Sanders and uh, Barbara Boxer proposed a bill that was basically a fee and dividend, except the government was going to take 40 percent of the money. And that makes it, uh, it's not going to work. I mean, first of all, conservatives are never going to accept that. Uh, that that's, makes it a tax, and uh, a tax depresses the economy. A carbon fee and dividend actually spurs the economy, because there is some income redistribution. The low-income people will tend to have a better chance to come out ahead in this case, and they tend to spend the money when they get their dividend. Dr. James Hansen, you talked about the potential collapse of the West Antarctic ice sheet. What would that mean? Well, that's, it would mean several meters of sea level rise. That's the biggest threat that climate change has in store for us, because it would mean that all coastal cities would become dysfunctional, and the economic consequences of that are incalculable. And uh, the number of uh, refugees that you would have, 100 million people in Bangladesh, which most of them would be have to find some place to go. So it, it's uh, it's something. It's hard to imagine how we can have a, a governable world if we let the Antarctic ice sheet collapse. The coastal cities, for example, in the United States, if climate change isn't curbed, what would happen? Well, just just look at uh, New York City, for example. If you had a sea level rise of several meters, you cannot protect these cities. It's not. It's simply not practical. What to about building to high meters. sea walls? Uh, well, for for a very small area, you may be able to do that. But then, still, that's when you get storms, you'll get uh, water overthrown over the sea walls. It's just not practical. We need to keep a sea level relatively stable or we have economic consequences and that are enormous. And how do you enormous. do that? You do that by phasing down emissions rapidly, at least a few percent per year. And the only way that will happen is if we have uh, a carbon fee, because otherwise 
you know, somebody's going to keep burning it. These countries are, you know, saying, okay, we're going to reduce our emissions 30%. But what does that do when the price remains cheap? Somebody else will burn it. That just makes the price even cheaper if, the, if it's less dear. So you have to make the fossil fuel price honest. So you've been preaching about climate change, speaking about climate change, getting arrested around climate change now for decades. Um, Talk about the science back, what, in 1988, and where it is today. And that brings me to all the um, exposés that both the Los Angeles Times and Inside Climate News have done around Exxon doing brilliant research decades ago and then covering it up. You're at the Earth Institute at Columbia. Yeah. Uh, Exxon Mobil threatening Columbia University, saying that the research that is done around this, uh, wrote a letter to Lee Bollinger, the president of Columbia, um, uh, is misleading, is wrong, and threatening the money they've given to Columbia. Yeah, yeah worse than that, uh, I remember writing letters complaining about the fact that Exxon Mobil was funding uh, changes to textbooks um, in uh, grade school and junior high school to make it sound like we didn't understand climate change and we didn't, uh, there was no evidence uh, that humans were causing climate change. So, yeah, that sounds like uh, criminal activity to me. But now, uh, uh, most of the captains of industry actually say they would like to be part of the solution. They have children and grandchildren, too. So if our government would give them the incentives to do that by putting a rising fee on carbon, they would, they would love to be part of the solution. I think that's true for most uh, captains of industry, as I call them. But our governments are not doing that. So I really blame it on our governments. They pretend that they're doing something like what they're doing here. This is a fraud. They're not, they should be smart enough to understand that the policies that they're proposing here are not going to make a significant reduction in global emissions. In our final 30 seconds, you got arrested over the Keystone XL pipeline. Ultimately, it was torpedoed by President Obama. Um, what do you think needs to happen now? That was grassroots action that was sustained over a yeah. period of years. Yeah, so th and, and that's useful, but only if we get a price on carbon, because that's the only way we'll keep that in the ground, is with a rising fee on carbon so that we get other energies to replace the fossil fuels. So people should really, we need grassroots support, and now people have to actually understand what's needed, because the leaders, you know, you would think you just tell them we want to solve the problem, that's not enough. You've actually got to tell them what to do. I want to thank you for being with us, Dr. James Hansen, Director of Climate Science at Columbia University's Earth Institute. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back in a minute.